Welcome back. It's men's singles time. For Germany. It's Dieter Domke, the tall, rangy German in blue. Against the well-traveled Malaysian at this stage. I think I've seen him in every corner of Europe over the past 18 months. And according to Alistair Casey, who was here over the last couple of days, he's been every, in every corner of Oceania as well, uh, collecting world ranking points. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what the reasons are behind it, but when he's coming from Malaysia, there's such a good group of players in there, you know, even in Malaysia itself. And playing Asian tournaments, you can lose first round so often. Comes to Europe, the standard's a little bit lower. You can win tournaments, go through rounds, get ranking points, you know, it's good experience as well. Of course, he's son of the, the legendary. Sidek, yeah. former coach to Lee Chong Wei. Sitting in the chair behind him. Did he win an Olympic medal, Misbun, in men's doubles, or was that, it, was that his other two brothers? That was his brothers. Brothers, yeah. There was five brothers up. Five of them? I think there was five, yeah. yeah. All early 90s type of vintage. <laughs> we were saying yesterday in commentary, Certainly, a sizable wallet behind this uh, setup because Daddy in the seat behind. I don't, I'm not sure of the person to his the other coach's chair, but they also have another guy in an orange jacket. You'll see off to the right-hand corner with the video camera, who just videos them, yeah. videos the matches. So there's four of them, literally traveling for the last 18 months. Yeah, they like to travel as a team, Malaysians, and also when you see them. I think it's been lost quite early on in Scotland. They're still mm. there every day training together as a yeah. team, four players, coach, two coaches. The guy to the right is uh, Salim. The guy the oh, Salim, that's Salim. He's a coach in Norway. Norway, Denmark, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, also in Finland. The Salim is travelling as part of the, of, of the quartet now, okay. I think he's living back in Malaysia, I'm not so sure about that. He's been in Europe, so he's, he's a useful part of their team when they're travelling around. Yeah, nice guy. Very nice guy. Yeah. Just didn't recognize him there. My apologies to Salim. What do you think of the qualities this Malaysian has? He's, you know, we're so used to seeing these German players and on the circuit, but you know, we've got a Malaysian coming in here, kind of. Set in the balance, coming with a different style of play. First of all, it's great for our European circuit players. Uh, second of all, I w happen to be overly impressed by him because, quite honestly, he hasn't had really the best of results. Yeah. I saw him at the Polish International, you know, international series at the beginning of the year in uh, in Lubin, and uh, it was one set up, and it was seventeen. Nine or ten in the second round match, I can't remember against who, and lost. And I thought the same thing was going to happen yesterday against um, Lukas Schmidt. Lukas came right back at him, I think, towards the end of that uh, third game. And but he, and Lu I think Lukas had match point, four match points. It, yeah, and, and the Malaysian came right back, stayed focused. So. My opinion changed of him yesterday after that win over Luca Schmidt. Mentally, I thought he was a little bit weak on the court. Yeah. Again, I've seen him lots of times, Sam, you know, getting a lead and switching off. Switching off, thinking the match is over. So, uh, yesterday changed my opinion of him. I have a much higher opinion of him. I did see him push Victor Axelsson to three games and it was something like 22-20 in the third game at the Denmark International in 2000, not this year's, in 2012, so uh, there is some quality there for sure. I think he's an you know, it's an interesting style of play, he's sort of just all round. Yeah, you know, he's an all rounder. He keeps the shuttle going and then he's got some quick shots here yeah. and there. But, um, you know, I thought, looking this week and even speaking different coaches. Uh, Dieter Donka's style of play is just so effective. Yeah, Dieter certainly has had a good week. 
And his 10 and 10 victory over Pablo, Pablo Abian certainly would probably give him the favourites tag in this in this match. Yeah, fifth seed. And he had a tough first round, but that was against his brother, yeah. <laughs> Richard, and that went to three games. So, um, but other than that, he's been clear winner in two games. Very good to watch, you know, his angle, but the point of flat play he used, you know, coming from doubles myself, I think it's, you know, it's beautiful to watch on a single court. Count a lot of times, but flat pressure to the body there again. Yep. Smash. I like Dieter. Very unassuming guy. Big man, big tall guy. Has to be intimidating for your opponent. Of course, all the German singles players live in the shadow of Mark Schwiebler, and it's very hard to break out of that. But I think come uh, European men's team championships, certainly, when you look at Schwiebler and Domke in the singles, you know, Domke coming in most likely as second singles, he's going to win points, yeah. I think, at second singles. But I definitely agree with you, Mark. Uh, he's a very underrated player. Mm. You know, every time he seems to come into good form, he has an injury, and yeah. on one occasion he's in the German army. Called up, so, but I think if he gets his form together, he's definitely the Europeans up there. So remember the last Europeans, you know, he he beat Hans Christian Winningus in Correct. you know in the early rounds. On sweet, yeah, proved the individuals, yeah. You know, he and, uh, even before that, one turning, he was I think he was in the semi-finals. Mm -hmm. He, he can't do it. He is a quality player. It's good to see him back in the finals again. I'm just worried if he wins, how I'm going to reach up to interview him. Very tall man. With that being said, Mark, he moves very well. Someone's so tall to get down there. Yeah, certainly he has, you know, he has to reach half a step and he's either at either tram line, but as you said, that is the ability to get down really low for such a tall man is a feature of his game. Just a Malaysian who has the early initiative with the 11-7 interval lead. And a uh, good run of points for Misbun. He's trading 2-0 and then won six in a row and that's really set him up for this interval lead. Mark, I think Malaysian's just frustrated him a little bit. Mm. You know, he's getting everything back. He also got the speed on the shot. There's that flat play. Yeah, flat shots in a row. Getting the reply. In the roof. Looking up the low roof. You look at the Malaysian's results. It's been consistent, to be fair to him. Semi final after semi final after semi final, the Swiss International, Polish International, Canadian Open, which is a Grand Prix. 
did won did win the Hellas International, but, but to me that is a very weak win. Uh, traditionally, I think it's a weak enough international series tournament. And the Slovenian before that again an international series. Portuguese international, I think, is a challenge. No a series also. So still looking to make challenge breakthrough and a win at challenge level. So uh, if the Malaysian should do it, it'll be a pretty large milestone for him. He's yeah, sorry, go ahead, Sam. been everywhere though. He's been to India Grand Prix, Malaysian Open, then over to German Open, then a tour around Europe with the Swiss, Polish, Dutch, Portuguese, Denmark, Slovenia. This is a long time on the road. <laughs> Literally no break. Back over to the US and Canadian Opens. And then back to Europe again before heading off to Bahrain to come back for the Scottish two weeks ago. That's serious air miles. What would be the like? What's the long? What is the long-term goal for this? Do you think this is serious expense putting into this? And uh, what is he hoping to achieve? Will he will he qualify for Commonwealth? Is that an issue? Is that possible? He's outside of the Malaysian uh, national team, I assume. Yeah. Yesterday Never did. And <laughs> at the Polish, I said, Lisbon, because he's got really good English. Yeah. said, and when you win this, because it's in the second round against some uh, local club player from my memory. And I went up, and when you win, I need an interview. And he lost. So I didn't even get to interview him then. Siddek as a coach, he's very calm. You know, win, lose, a bad run of points, he never changes his, his expression sitting in the coach's chair. Take every point as it goes along to you on yeah. a cheat. So all going according to plan so far from a Malaysian perspective. A bit of frustration there from uh, Peter Duncan. A little bit of eyeballing coming off the court. That's sort of the humble look of apology from the Malaysian against the dairy glare of the German, you know. And uh, but the result is it's one nil lead for Misbun. And I, I think certainly, as I've seen him over the last 18 months, I'm starting to see a different player more uh, controlled player on court certainly controlling his emotions a lot better on court mentally uh, early a year ago uh, he would be losing matches ju just purely through lack of focus at important times but that seems to have improved a lot he's certainly in the driving seat now Sam Really, a lot of effort into it. It'll be interesting to 
see how this, this one goes. Good thing, Peter knows really nothing about it. Yeah. Against Pablo yesterday, you know you're going to be involved in rallies. Well, yeah. you have to negate those rallies. And that's what he did. He neutralized those rallies. I'd like to thank the German, for which had an opportunity, one of his players. Here, Lucas Mudd, but he must be here. You know, not a happy man. He, you know, he had that game wrapped up and somehow slipped through his hands. Yeah. Twenty sixteen ahead in the final game, I think it was, and really, you could see the disappointment from Schmidt. Quite nice to watch on court. Very fluid, has nice uh, posture, has nice technique, and those little pushes and those uh, double action pushes down the line. Maybe just lacking a little bit of power really favors the flick or the stick smash a lot rather than the full smash. Yeah, I think he's quite a technical player. No full smash there. Not quite 100%, maybe 90%. That's what Peter needs to do, you know. Higgins, Malaysian, they've all got really good defense and singles and doubles as well. But especially their singles, they practice a lot of defense. They've got to play that angle. Someone like Peter can definitely create it with his height. That was a long way out. Three all. Certainly, I think Sam, you know, just breaking away from the uh, the match. I think this is as big a crowd as, as I've maybe have seen on finals day at an Irish Open in recent years. Um, and we've had decent crowds all week. It's been an atmosphere in the hall. One thing that's one thing about this old hall in uh, in Baladol. You can get a little bit of atmosphere going. It's tight. It's intimate. Not all players like it. The roof is low, but uh, well, that's, that's the same for everybody. Some complaints about the shuttles, but uh, that's again the same for everybody. You just have to manage it and get on with it. We had the early issues with the line judges. That was less than uh, acceptable, to be honest. We spoke about it. And in the last two days, they have been really good. To be fair, you can see the, the amount of effort Bampton Ireland put in. There's a lot of people here mm -hmm. giving up their time. You know, but all the line judges on par they're going to care for. The whole, I think the whole plays pretty well. You know, mm -hmm. there's no, there's no drift, or you know, it's a true Bampton hall. Just a l maybe a little bit low, but you know, not, not, not much. But yeah, it's okay for all the doubles events, it's women singles. It's really where it suffers, I think, uh, because you've got so many of these top women singles sending it up so high, trying to get the shuttle coming down vertical on the baseline. Always very difficult to take a shuttle that's coming down vertical. And uh, check the more modern singles players and women singles. You see them all serving short and backhand now, like to Carolina and Kirsty. Of course, the big bonus for these type this, this uh, hall is they're next door to the airport, and the hotel is only two or three minutes on the bus. Yeah. So uh, it has a lot going for it, also. Yeah, 
it's easy for players if they need to get home early or you know, set up good location. This year it attracted a very big entry, which was good to see. Entry in excess of 300 athletes. The biggest and the probably the best entry this uh, event has seen. You know, I compare it. I've compared it to the Scottish Open, whereby <laughs> Scottish Open was Grand Prix this year, the next level up. But there was players in the draw, in the main draw, in the women's singles. Can't compare the men's singles because you got 64 at Grand Prix. But in the women's singles, there was a 32 draw, draw, and there was players that are in the main draw in Scotland, not even seeded in the qualification draw here in Ireland. So um, really it really has been the best Irish Open field. You saw it in your mixed doubles. It's very strong. Yeah. Do you know when you look when you look down through the year the players that have won Irish Open, it's always been very strong. Yeah. You know, the past winners. You know, yeah, there's always been good players who who've come, but in this year as a if you overall overall yeah. the standard look at the standard and the mixed doubles and the men's doubles. The women's singles we've seen Two players in the top side of top twenty in the world being beaten. Yeah, I think that's really like when you look at the events. It's not always the top seeds that are coming through. Yeah, you know, men's single the top seed went out early. Yeah, well, Vila, he really just wanted to get home. Lady singles the top seed went out early. Men's doubles. Yeah, you know there was a pattern. The Domka levels it up at nine all, three points in a row. The lanky German. Yeah, nine all. I think Dieter's, you know, slowly getting his way into the game. Good touch. Full three sixty from the German. Oh, it nearly toppled over. I think that's where Ramdan's so good. You know, when he's under pressure, he can play so many safe shots with good, quick hands. And it makes a big difference. You know, he's keeping himself in the rally with a quality shot, not just hoping that Dieter won't beat him on the next one. You know, he's nearly countering again. Good quick hands on the back. <laughs> Good support here from the Malaysian. It must be few of his friends in the crowd. So 11-9. Good reply from Misbon. After three points in a row from Domke at the level at 9 all. Two points in quick succession for the Malaysian. Not much discussion. Misbon to his son. Seems quite happy. Ah. Smiling away. Man, that red jacket, he he's, I think he's worn it since 1994. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling the cold, I think. Two-point lead. Play. All the twos, two-point lead in 22 minutes. Ooh, oh. oh, I thought that was out. Let's. If he. Valid reason to challenge it, certainly from Dieter, I think it was close. Oh, there we go. Great power.
after all the hard work from the German. Level it up before the first, before the interval. All that good work coming unstuck again. <laughs> I think Dieter just feels nothing's going his way. Surely the crowd seem to be getting behind the Malaysian. Early in the week, we had a huge Spanish presence in the hall. Beatrice and Pablo playing, and there was kids from the schools in the hall all speaking Spanish while they were playing and cheering for the Spaniards. Good to see good support for the Spanish players. That's great, man. Both men. Oh, oh that's super. fantastic. Great rally. Yeah, and a warm... And a knowledgeable round of applause from uh, everybody in the hall. I think everybody realizing how technically excellent that rally was. I think these are big serves now for Dieter Domka. Really can't afford to go six. 15-11, 16-11 behind. Has to put some pressure on Misbun right now. Great shot. Great yeah. stop next shot. The movement that makes that shot to the fact that you know, he's so far forward in the court taking it really early. And it's hard for Dieter to get close to that one. Tactical break for Domke. To be honest, he didn't even fall on the floor. He kept himself off the floor, but uh, I think he managed to wipe his forehead on the floor just to get a little bit of sweat down there. I think it's quite a good idea. You know, don't let the Malaysian get any more momentum. Let's see if he can get back into it now. Shot. Really good shot. You know, he's moving back the way, his weight's going back, and he can still keep himself in balance. They had a cross court winner. Really, really good play. Certainly, you can see a lot of the attack straight into the body of the tall German. Oh, that's good play from Dieter. defense is so good when he hits higher than him. The angle is the one that's yeah. going to get through. That's it, Sam. Certainly. Take a little bit of power off. Make sure the steep angle. knew that was a real chance. I should was nowhere near going over. Amazing given a little bit of a lifeline there. Oh, oh. Dieter give a shout as if he had won that point. Yeah. It's out. 
I think that's the difference of the, you know, Dieter Dunk all week and Dieter Dunk of today is those easy airs. You know, mm. all week he's been really sharp, consistent. You know, we have to remember that this is an unfamiliar position for Dieter. He's not used to being in finals uh, with the spotlight on one court and all the focus just on two men. Experienced man and experienced player, but still not an experienced finalist. We were all willing Schmidt to win yesterday because my co-commentator Alistair Casey was throwing in as many Schmidt has hit the fan type of uh, puns as he possibly could in commentary. Sixteen, nineteen. are still hanging on. Yep. Net battle. Again, the German force to lift. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh. That's a good, a good as rally as Dieter has played in the whole match. and this is where I've seen him fall so many times before. That's really going for it. Yeah. That's good. That's what I like that. Didn't stay passive. Went for the rally. A bit of relief by the Malaysian camp. Match point. That's unfortunate, okay. really, for Domke. It was the right shot to play. But it's Ramdan who falls to the ground in celebration. And there's a big breakthrough for the Malaysian. You can see what it means to him. A lot of work going on around, around the world. And uh, happy for him. You know, Dieter's had a good tournament, but I think the best man has won on the day for sure. Sam, once again, thank you. And we'll uh, break in our next match on court, the final match of the day. Women's singles. We win Zhang for the United States against Beatrice Corrales of Spain. Give a big round of applause. What a tough and British game. Absolutely
Big round of applause, Miss Bull Rundown. 